Hey folks, Ira here. I hope you have had a great Sunday. Thanks for tuning in for the Earthquake Report. Today is April the 4th, 2016. Today is also widely known as the following. Don't go to work unless it's fun day, tweed day, oh, and it is also known as world party day. I don't know what is going on. Three holidays on one date? What a bunch of crap. We certainly have had an interesting week. We've seen several volcanoes erupt. In fact, the volcano that erupted in Japan yesterday was pretty amazing. A lot of attention has been focused on the static electricity discharged, which was witnessed as molten rock and lava bellowed from the volcano's butte. If you haven't seen this yet, we have you covered. Check it out now. Outside of the volcanoes, we have seen a series of substantial earthquakes. Here's the breakdown for the week. We have had four earthquakes equaling to or exceeding a magnitude 6, all of which began to ramp up starting on April the 1st. We experienced the 6.0 in Shingu, Japan, Papua New Guinea with a 6.2, Chiknik Lake, Alaska with a 6.2, and just this morning the 7.1, which was later revised to a 6.9 in Port Ulri, Vanuatu. This earthquake was fairly shallow, with a depth of 21 miles. Fortunately, no reports of damage or tsunamis have been reported. Actually, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center stated that the threat of tsunami waves has passed. Thank goodness for that. As for the area, they are no stranger to earthquakes. In fact, they experienced two similar-sized tremors last October and in December. In both occasions, no damage was reported. These earthquakes coincide with the geomagnetic storms we encountered late April the 1st. It was believed that these storms would peter out, but to everyone's surprise, a solar wind stream continues to cause intermittent geomagnetic storms. With that being said, until the storms subside, the threat for notable earthquakes will be present. During the past week, we have clocked in 23 earthquakes that fell within the magnitude 5 category, 22% of which struck Indonesia, and 13% rattled Papua New Guinea. Outside of these areas, we experienced magnitude 5 earthquakes hit Alaska, Chile, Greece, Guam, Mexico, New Zealand, and South Georgia and the South Sandwich Islands. 83 of the 1,649 earthquakes that we have experienced over the past seven days fell within the magnitude 4 category. Alaska and Indonesia took the brunt of these quakes. Nikolski, Alaska experienced 10, and Chiknik Lake with 3. As you know, for all of man's achievements over the past centuries, every now and then we are reminded that ultimately we are at the mercy of nature. In seconds, something that has remained dormant for decades can suddenly awaken, destroying a city and demolishing everything in its path. A calm day can quickly turn to catastrophe as the ground shakes and buildings crumble. That's essentially what we face on a regular basis, and because of this, life is definitely exciting and unexpected. Anyways, let's take a glance at today's events. We have racked in a total of 221 earthquakes thus far. The strongest for the day comes to us from none other than Port Ulri, Vanuatu, at 6.9 and a 5.1. Mirroring the 5.1, we turn our attention to Greece. The Arabian and Eurasian plates have been budding lately, causing some interesting movement in the Mediterranean region. Alaska has been quite busy as well, with 43 registered for the day. Anchor Point clocked in 5, the strongest being a 2.7, and Chiknik Lake was 6, all of which fell within the magnitude 3 category, the strongest there being a 3.8, and finally, Talkinta was 6 as well, the most intense there being a 3. Washington continues to see increased activity, 8 in total for the day, the strongest being a 1.1 in Amboy. Oregon was mostly quiet, only two experienced, a 1.5 and a 1.9 in Lakeview. California has experienced 95 thus far, the majority of which struck on or around the San Jacinto Fault Zone in the San Andreas, just outside of San Bernardino Mountains. 
Mammoth Lakes and the Hilton Creek Fault Zone were mostly quiet today, only four experienced, the most intense being a 1.2. The strongest to strike the state was a 2.6, which originated from the geysers. Haran, Cobb, and Easton followed suit with a 2.4, a 2.3, and a 2.2. The Silver State, also known as Nevada, remains incredibly busy. 43 have been experienced, with the most intense rattling Bunkerville. This was a 2.6. Hawthorne took the brunt of their movement, though, with 22. The average magnitude for this area is a 0.5. Their newly discovered fault has certainly been active. Before we leave the states, let's focus on Oklahoma for a second. They have registered five today, all of which have been fairly substantial. Two had an epicenter in or around Luther, a 3.2 and a 2.9, and Cushing followed up with the rest, two 2.4s and a 2.1. South America, Care of Chile has experienced three today, a 4.7 in Valinar, a 4.3 in Kalima, and a 4.1. Heading west, we see the Central East Pacific rise clocked in a 2.4, and Hawaii, who has experienced two today, a 2.3 at the volcano and a 2.9. Iwaki, Japan, has been shaken by two earthquakes today, a 4.7 and a 4.5. Heading across the Tropic of Cancer and the North Pacific Ocean, the Philippines experienced a 4.9, and the Fiji Islands clocked in a 5.1. One thing is clear, folks, the Ring of Fire is incredibly active. It will be interesting to see what tomorrow holds for us. And that is it for the Earthquake Report. If you experienced an earthquake today, or if you would like to comment on anything else, please post below. We would like to hear from you. Make certain to like and subscribe. Share if you feel inclined. Also, if you like the social media thing, you can link to us via the standard allotted social sites in the description. We'll end this report with a video feed from our favorite star. Have a great night. Hoorah!